Well, I, I can tell you the first day uh, I was put in a hotel in uh, Wan Chai. It's, I walk out about seven o'clock for, for the dinner. And you know, I think this is very common for people who come from the West. They, they cannot believe what they see, you know, because the buildings are so tall, there are so many people, there are so many cars. So I, I thought I'm, I'm some kind of drugs, you know, dreaming. Hallucinating, we say, you know, just imagining this, you know, it cannot possibly be like this. People cannot live, so many people cannot live in such a small space. So that was the first impression. So I was working in Northern Ireland, but I thought I should have another change of the scenery. So I asked my bosses, and one of them had worked in Hong Kong for eight years. So he said, you should work in Hong Kong, you will have a lot of opportunities. You will get a job you don't deserve. So I follow his advice and I apply, and I was able to get a job in Radio Hong Kong. And he was quite correct, because we had very good conditions of work, holidays and salary and I stayed for two and a half years it was very enjoyable and I uh, spent a lot of time studying Guangdong Hua but after two and a half years I realized uh, my skills are too limited because as you know in Hong Kong there are, there are so many talented people and uh, my talents were not enough so I thought I must learn Mandarin also so then I went to Taiwan and stayed two and a half years. Uh, well, the main reason, of course, is uh, I was fortunate to meet the wonderful Hong Kong lady. So uh, you, after you marry the lady, then, of course, your life changes. So she's a Hong Kong lady, so she preferred to, to live here. So we live here. In Meifu, I go swimming very often, and we have many public swimming pools. And the behavior of the other swimmers is very good. You know, nobody stare at you or, or um, bump into you or ask you difficult questions. Everyone is extremely polite. And I think you have to have good manners with so many people living together. If you insult other people, if you have an argument with other people, then it's uncontrollable. Well, the first book was about this Buddhist uh, movement. So the second book is about a grandfather. This, it was a story very worth telling because he lived in Faku in Liaoning for 45 years. He lived through the Boxer Rebellion, the Xinhai Revolution, the Japanese occupation of Manchuria. Um, we, we could only write books about what we know Hong Kong is a very good place to do research. You know, we can go to the internet, it's very simple, there are many libraries. Yes, I, I, I mean, I'm interested in many aspects of, of China. I mean, when we are studying uh, Mandarin in Taipei, one day my teacher said, that we must thank uh, Mr. Hu Shu because if it wasn't for him, you would be learning Wen Yan Wen. And <laughs> And if we are learning Wen Yan Wen, maybe it will take five years, you know. But Bai Wa Wen is much easier to learn. So, from, from that time, I have an idea of, of, uh, of Hu Shi. I cannot compare in any way with these very famous Chinese scholars, and their books are very much better than mine. But all I can say is this is like an easy book. You know, it's short, it's simple. It gives you all the main information. If you want to understand Hu Shi in more depth, then of course you must, you must uh, read these other books. We are very happy living in Hong Kong, so it's a very nice place to live. So, uh, yeah, I, I would love to carry on writing, but the key point which I just say is you have to find publishers. Yeah, as long as I can find a publisher, yes, uh, I would like to, to keep, on, keep on writing.